Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to the horrifying history of asbestos. And this is a bit of a, this is a bit of a different reaction. I mean, it's not, a, a, I guess, a topic that's probably going to have that many people interested. But for me, it is because it's one of those things. That I remember when I was younger, you'd always, I don't know if I was taught about it in school. Or if it's just one of those things you'd hear about. But it's basically if you breathe it in, you're screwed because it, it won't necessarily kill you instantly. But it's one, it would like, I remember then someone who explained it. It will like hook onto your lungs and it just will be there forever and i guess it just makes your lungs slowly fail or something i guess i don't fully know but i know it's how they made a lot of buildings back in the day and a lot of buildings i guess still have it in them but they can't demolish them because they're worried about the effects of the asbestos doing whatever but yeah we're gonna see because i mean yeah i don't really know it's it's not used now but i guess when some people when was that actually like when was it banned like in the 70s were buildings still being built with asbestos in it or was did they know at that point i guess it will explain if it was bad or not because obviously before they assumed it was probably fine to use but i don't know what they replaced it with but yeah the fact that so many people had it in their homes and built with it it's quite a scary quite a scary thought because obviously it would have killed so many people but is it as dangerous when you're building it or does it become more dangerous when it's set in place and it's there over time like if you're making it from scratch is it initially dangerous or is it just I, that might be a really stupid question but i feel like some things become more dangerous after they're like left to set and stuff but we're gonna check this out and learn about it but yeah let's just check this video out and see the history of asbestos and what it really does this man could tell you a lot about asbestos now. If only he'd known asbestos is so dangerous. Oh, in the 60s. He needed a respirator and other protective devices to be safe. If only every worker and employer knew that the asbestos installed in the past is still there today. Oh, it's the And if only they were a cure. Few minerals can cause as much fear as one of the most widely used minerals throughout human history, asbestos. Its use has been recorded some 4,500 years ago, has been used by pharaohs and kings, wow. and played a vital role during the Industrial Revolution. But it so it was all that time and they still used it up until the late 80s. Exposure to tiny asbestos fibres can lead to deadly cancers and chronic... Oh, at least the cancers... Oh. To lung illnesses. It can be years or even decades before exposure to asbestos presents in truly horrendous illness. In today's video, we will cover exactly what asbestos actually is, how it can affect you, and the history of its application to its eventual limiting of use. Asbestos is a catch all term for six types of fibrous silicate mineral. Generally speaking, there are two major types of asbestos. They are chrysotile or white asbestos, and amosite, brown asbestos. Asbestos is noted for its heat resistance, for its properties as an electrical insulator, and when mixed with other materials can act as a strengthening agent. Asbestos consists of long, thin fiber-like crystals. These fibers themselves are made of microscopic fibers. It's these that cause harm to those who breathe them in. When asbestos is cut, chipped or otherwise disturbed, these microscopic fibers can be released as a fine dust. Such dust can linger in an area for days before settling, providing a deadly airborne risk. If breathed in, the asbestos fibers can enter a person's lungs where the body can have great difficulty removing them, if at all. The sharp fibers lodged into a person's lungs result in scarring, a reduction in a person's lung capacity and inflammation. No amount of exposure to asbestos is considered safe, but following repeated exposure to asbestos can lead to a high risk of contracting many deadly conditions. Chief amongst them is asbestosis. Over time, following repeated exposure and damage caused by the lodged fibers builds up to a point where the scarring and inflammation leads to a shortness of breath. Other symptoms include a persistent cough, chest pains, and fatigue. These symptoms can take decades after the exposure to present, as the reduction of a person's lung capacity will slowly degrade as the fibres repeatedly damage the lungs. The so it just stays there for years and years and they just don't go. That is one brutal ass thing, man. 
how can that be the case? It would just be there no matter what. It won't clear through, it will just stay there. That is so fucked. Body's immune system will constantly attempt to deal with a foreign body, resulting in the tissue scarring and plaques forming in the lungs. Unfortunately, there is no current cure for asbestosis. There are only treatments to help reduce its impact. A patient can undergo oxygen therapy to help improve breathlessness or take part in rehabilitation exercises, but it will be a case of living with the condition. Another disease associated with asbestosis is pleural mesothelioma, a cancer that affects the lining of the lungs. Symptoms again are similar to asbestosis, but they also include a loss of appetite, unexplained weight loss and high temperature, particularly at night. The disease usually affects a person from the age of 60 or so on. Treatments will be what you might expect for cancers, being chemotherapy and radiotherapy, though surgery is perhaps an option only at very early stages. As for the history of asbestos, one of the first examples can be found in Finland some 4,500 years ago. There it was mixed with clay and used to form stronger, more heat-resistant pots. In ancient Greece, asbestos cloths were used to wrap around the dead before cremation. As asbestos is highly flame resistant, the ashes from the wood and the body would not be mixed. Instead, the ashes kept safely in the asbestos shroud. In ancient Egypt, the embalmed bodies of the pharaohs would be wrapped in asbestos to help protect them from flipping hell. They just wrap it in it. And these people would have been so unaware of anything from any like the, all any of the effects from any of this but look at that there's so much flipping deteriorating hell. whilst it may seem strange with our present knowledge asbestos cloth was used as a party trick napkins and tablecloths would be soiled during feasts before being thrown into fires to cleanse them without taking any damage such oh a trick being favored by Charlemagne. it was known early enough that asbestos presented some form of danger oh so they did know Pliny the Elder, a renowned Roman philosopher and author, wrote about the disease of slaves that affected the lungs of those unfortunate enough to have to mine asbestos. Mm. He also noted that some of the miners would wear a thin membrane made from the bladder of a goat as a form of respirator to try and protect themselves from the asbestos. Flipping but hell. the boom in the use of asbestos would come during the Industrial Revolution. With the widespread use of steam power and electricity, asbestos was used as an insulator in all manner of engines, boilers and generators. Mines in Canada, Russia, Australia and Zimbabwe fueled a huge industry. And as the mines became mechanized, tens of thousands of tons of asbestos were made available each year. One of the key industries that asbestos would end up in was construction. All manner of building materials were produced containing or made from asbestos. Fireproof tiles, tar, and insulation would all contain it, offering a cheap and apparently safe way to build houses. With asbestos prevalent in so many industries, it didn't take long for doctors to start to find a link between workers exposed to the mineral and lung disease. In 1898, a British government report on asbestos manufacturing in England noted widespread damage and injury of the lungs due to the dusty surrounding of the asbestos mill. In 1906, British doctor H. Montague Murray conducted a post-mortem of a worker from an asbestos factory. He noted a large number of asbestos fibres lodged in the man's lungs. By 1908, a number of insurance companies began to subtly reduce insurance coverage whilst increasing premiums for asbestos workers. Yet the focus was very much still on the widespread use of asbestos in many industries, with hundreds of thousands of people exposed to the dangers both at work and at home. However, with the prevalence of other respiratory diseases such as tuberculosis, many of those affected by asbestos may have attributed their symptoms to other illnesses. It was not until 1924 that the first death was attributed to asbestosis. Nellie Kershaw was a 33-year-old textile worker from Rochdale, England when she died. She had suffered from symptoms for four years, but as her illness was linked to an occupational disease, she was unable to claim on the National Health Service insurance. Wow. Instead, she had to rely on sickness benefits from her employer. However, her employer, the Turner Brothers Asbestos Company, did not pay out, as asbestos poisoning was not a recognized industrial illness. In fact, they strongly protested that asbestos could be poisonous. Nellie Kershaw died without receiving any compensation. 
Her death did, however, trigger a post-mortem inquest. Whilst her death was initially ruled as TB, further investigations revealed microscopic asbestos fibres in her lungs. This was deemed to be the true cause of her death. This in turn led to a parliamentary investigation which ultimately led to the first asbestos industry regulations in 1931. Asbestos, however, continued in its widespread use. In fact, many of you will have seen asbestos without even realising it. During the scene in The Wizard of Oz where the main characters are asleep in a poppy field, the fake snow is in fact chrysotile asbestos. What the fuck? At this point they surely knew the dangers, what the hell man? You can use anything and make it look like snow, just paint some fucking feathers or something, I don't, just, <laughs> what the fuck? After the devastation of the Second World War, a need for rapid rebuilding led to the widespread use of prefabricated buildings. One of the materials used was asbestos. During the Cold War, asbestos was used in much of the military hardware made. In the 1950s, a number of reports were published in England, Germany and America all detailing the instances of lung cancer amongst asbestos workers. Asbestos industry-funded studies that confirmed a causal link between exposure and lung disease were not widely shared or even published. But in 1953, Dr. R what the hell? That is insane. Richard Doll was tasked by Turner Brothers Asbestos Company to study the mortality data of a group of its workers. The data that was provided, however, was tailored by the company. But nevertheless, Dr. Doll was able to identify an above average number of lung cancer cases, with it being 10 times more prevalent than the rest of the population. The Turner Brothers Asbestos Company attempted to prevent the publishing of the report. Thankfully, Dr. Doll and the editor of the journal pressed ahead and published a paper, yet it would take decades for any meaningful change to occur. The 1970s proved to be the peak of asbestos use, with The 70s was the peak. After all of this, they know the dangers. They still just... F Wait, Micronite filter cigarette? What? Hundreds of thousands of tons of asbestos used in all manner of industries. But around this time, the general public started to understand and see the link between exposure to asbestos and the devastating lung diseases it caused. It used in cigarettes. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. I didn't realize asbestos was this like um, flexible. I thought it was just for buildings, but no, it's for a whole manner of things. More and more people were displaying signs of asbestosis following years of exposure. The effectiveness, the low cost, and widespread use of asbestos was no longer the major factor in its use. No longer could governments ignore the dangers of asbestos. In the UK, it wouldn't be until 1985 that the import and use of blue and brown asbestos was banned. Wow. Chrysotile asbestos would not be banned until 1999. Many countries started to ban or limit the use of asbestos in the 1980s, and as of today, there are 66 countries that have banned or limited the use of asbestos. Wait, some countries still use it. But this, of course, does not mean that the millions of tons of asbestos disappeared overnight. Mm. In many a location, asbestos lay hidden within the wall cavities, within the concrete, or on roofs of countless buildings. During refurbishments and demolitions of buildings, there could be a risk of asbestos being disturbed. As discussed previously, the danger lies when asbestos is cut broken or otherwise disturbed. The deadly fibres can be released and inhaled. Your humble narrator was working as a labourer in Sydney not too long ago, and I witnessed firsthand just how easy it is to be exposed to asbestos in such a manner. In Australia, the cheap and readily available blue asbestos was used in much of the construction, sometimes without proper planning permission or notice that asbestos has been used. It was quite the shock when I knocked down a wall to come face to face with a honeycomb structure of asbestos fiberboard. I had been told that there was no asbestos left in the building. Wow. Such exposure is dangerous, though the real risk is prolonged or large exposure. It should go without saying that it is never worth the risk to be exposed to asbestos. Only those with proper training, equipment and protective gear ought to remove asbestos in a manner that is safe. 
Should you uncover any asbestos in your home, it is vital that you contact a trusted asbestos removal company. They will be able to deal with- Imagine working for that company. That is one hellish job, man. Your whole flipping job is to clean up this toxic thing. I mean, it's probably good pay to be fair, but flipping hell. Do these masks 100% work as well? Because I know obviously they will, but I'm, I'd always be worried that there's just going to be one that can like, just get in your lungs and all this sort of stuff. I mean, one would be fine. One fibre is not going to do anything. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe there's, they are 100%. Or can it like get into other parts of your body and affect you? Or is it only a worry if it gets into your lungs? Deal with the matter safely. Methods of disposing asbestos can range from melting it down to a harmless state or sealing it in airtight containers and burying it. The dangers of asbestos contamination can perhaps best be seen in the case of Wittenoom, Australia. This was the site for Australia's only blue asbestos mine, but has since been delisted as a town. Patches of what? blue asbestos stain the ground, proving it a danger to those who lived there, though now the town has been abandoned. Flipping it is hell. thought that as many as 237,000 people die each year from exposure to asbestos. Nevertheless, Asbestos is still mined in Russia, China. It's still mined in Russia and China. And Kazakhstan. What the f Two of the three most powerful countries still mine asbestos. Do you know how ridiculous that is? I guess it's because they sell it to lower income countries and it's just a good money, like money income for them, right? And used in multiple countries. And you may be surprised to learn that commercial use of asbestos still continues in the United States, Brazil, Russia, India, and many more countries. In the US? It's still there? That is wild. Because in the UK, there's a whole big thing about that, how, like, there's, like, signs and stuff. I assume it's the same in most places, but... Like, it's, a, it's quite a taboo um, thing, I guess. Not a taboo, but, like, it's just a, a thing you know to avoid. And god damn, they, stop, they still use it. We know all too well of the dangers of asbestos, and yet for many, the risk to human health does not outweigh the benefits. Despite decades of scientific and medical consensus as to the dangers, it still took many more years for the countries who have banned asbestos to finally do so. Asbestos represents one of the greatest scandals in occupational health. With the steps taken to hide from the public the truth about one of the deadliest materials. And so, we suggest you consider this material for the walls of your home. Designed to last a lifetime. A trouble-free lifetime. Bro, what the hell happened in this one? Um, my grandpa was a victim of asbestosis. No, asbe asbestos during the Vietnam War. He served in the Navy on the submarines with asbestos insulation. About 50 years later, he was diagnosed with meso mesothelioma. He faded so fast and he was dead within a month and a half. Flipping hell. It's rapid. Like, as soon as you it like hits you, you're done. It's crazy how nobody back then knew that asbestos cigarettes and lead paint weren't safe. Who knows what we would have had today that is hazardous. Yeah, exactly. Probably using things now that we don't realise are really, really bad for us. Probably this screen. Screens are these like these bright lights and these screens are probably terrible for your brain. And we're gonna really find that out within years because it's all still new. Fifty years time we're gonna be wondering why there's all these people with like I don't know, tumours in their brains because we couldn't spend our whole lives looking at screens. I would not be surprised, but yeah, we'll see when it comes to it, right? But yeah, hopefully you found this interesting and let me know your thoughts, but yeah. And also in the US, is it just, is it not really a taboo thing or is it, is it a thing that people know about, but they just still use it because maybe there's safety things around that they, they, they know how to get around. But yeah, let me know your thoughts and until next time, I subscribe and peace.